evolution of the USA. The USA? That's unlike any USA I've ever seen. And that's because this is a United States that ended up in Australia. So the 13 colonies still end up on the East Coast here with some very, very different Australian naming going on. So just like the United States in North America, we've got a big 13 colonies next to a bunch of French territory and the Spanish down this way. So this would be like Spanish Mexico or what they called it New Spain. And this is basically Florida and I guess Puerto Rico. Thank you for that. I, I wouldn't have known that otherwise. So let's see what happens next on the timeline. Ah, so I think the Americans of Australia or the, how do I even say that? The United States of Australian uh, Americans or Aussies, they just bought all that territory, at least half the territory from France. They did the Louisiana Purchase or in this universe, it might be the unorganized uh, Aboriginal territory purchase. There still needs to be a Mexican-American war, or in this universe, I don't even know what how I can make a metaphor for that. Ah, there we go. Now we have a United States of Australia. They are independent from the British, as you can see. Oh, so this is gonna end up becoming, like, uh, Canada, basically, the, the Canada of Australia. Meanwhile, the French are just gone now. We had Manifest Destiny on North America. Now get ready for Manifest Destiny in Australia. Oh, man, and we're going with our traditional drawing borders with just straight lines. Love how, like, they're actually actually drawn like carefully here in the former 13 colonies now yeah once they get out of here they, we just start drawing straight lines there it is British Queensland is gonna become Canada basically of this universe so we still need to take Florida and Puerto Rico at some point this should have been Cuba basically and here we go the Aussies of the USA continuing to oh I just realized the acronym the acronym still the same USA but it's of Australia we're continuing to manifest destiny out the Spanish and now the Spanish are probably fighting Napoleon back in Europe and all their colonies got independence disputed Northwest Australia oh this this is uh, disputed between the US and Canada. That's how it was. That's how like the Cascadia region was for a lot, long time there. As we continued to race out towards the Pacific, the Americans and British couldn't confirm exactly who had this territory, the Oregon territory. And that's happening here as well. So this is basically Mexico once Spain leaves. I think this is actually Cuba. Both the Aussies and British have decided to continue the straight line. And this is how we divided up that disputed Oregon territory. I just realized we grabbed Bajo or basically this is Florida of Australia. Now there's going to be a war here. Oh, this is uh, supposed to be Texas. I think. That's how the war starts. Now we have the American Civil War, or I guess it's the Australian Civil War, the Confederate States of Australia. Even that works, the CSA. The war for Mexico has been fought and we've taken a bunch from Mexico. This would actually be a lot scarier of a threat, right? Isn't a lot of Australian development right down here in the south, but I mean, this is where most of the people live anyways. Does this CSA or Confederate States of Australia have more of a chance than, well, the real CSA? Probably not, but it could be closer. And here's the final map of the United States states of Australia. This is basically mirroring North America. Wait, I think something's still supposed to happen with that. Yeah, we're coexisting with uh, British Queensland or Canada and the Republic of... I don't know what that is. That is hilarious. No, we're not done yet. That's because we needed our own Alaska. Or in this universe, we grabbed New Guinea. We needed something not on the continent, I guess. Which, of course, if we have our own Alaska, that means we also need our own Hawaii. I guess it's these little islands here. And we are taking Puerto Rico, I guess. Puerto Extraño. We had it at least momentarily. Now it's independent. Now it's Oh, so, okay, that is supposed to be, I couldn't tell if that was going to be Puerto Rico, which is a U.S. territory, if that's Cuba, that is, now we can confirm it's, it's Cuba. And the British is no longer added to British Queensland, this is an independent nation, or independent Canada. Wow, that was a lot. The combined population of, like, five, from Chandler and Howe being their own states. Viva la Tasmania? I just really hope that continent ended up getting a lot more population in this universe than it does in ours. What if World War One ended in 1916? This would be a whole two years before it actually ended. So this is what the Central Powers, or German Germany, Austria, Hungary, and the Ottoman Empire were looking at that time, and as you can see, they were still doing pretty good. Maybe even at their peak. They're not exactly at their peak, they still need another year to grow. So this would mean in the peace deal, Germany would get a big chunk of Belgium, and actually Belgium wouldn't even really exist. And I can see why they would have wanted that stuff, that is the German-speaking side of the Belgian nation. Is Belgium even Belgium without that stuff? Then we'd have the Austro-Hungarians taking a big bite out of Italy. This would be their punishment for not joining the Central Powers. Remember that all three of these nations did previously have a military alliance. We'd have a pretty thick Bulgaria and then the Ottomans that, well, are the Ottomans getting anything? That's kind of messed up. Maybe their stuff is like outside this map. Keep in mind, this is the world in 1920, so four years after the potential peace deal. And interestingly, that would mean no Soviet Union, apparently. So maybe the Tsar actually is able to crush the Bolshevik Revolution because he's not worried about fighting Germany out here. That is a fascinating thought. So then communism doesn't even really ever exist. Possibly in the French Republic. I don't know. It's like the, um, what's that theory? When you 
halt one universe. It still ends up coming true. Like, there's probably communism that rises up in, like, France or something. I mean, this world, maybe the British and the French are forced to pay, like, massive reparations to the German Empire, which ends up pissing off their people, which makes them end up going fascist. I like how Poland is here. It's just a really, really disgraced Poland. I mean, at least they exist. They didn't even exist before this. This is how the Russians were forced to pay by releasing these states. Oh, note the German Morocco here, too, before they didn't even have that. Embarrassingly small puppet Poland makes a man tear up. Oh, maybe some of those states are puppets. I mean, yeah, let's look at the bright side. It does exist for the first time in decades in this universe. Remember, too, that in 1916, this was still before the U.S. joined the war, so possibly this could have been maybe likely. Now I'd want to see the inevitable World War II in this universe. What if the Nazis never took power in Germany? Now, immediately my eye is drawn to the Auschwitz of Austria. They still managed to do that. Not sure exactly how the Weimar Republic managed to do that, but pretty impressive. Assuming since the no-no Germans never took power, it is still the Weimar Republic. You think they're still paying one billion marks for a loaf of bread? So there was no World War II in this universe, or at least not yet. It is the year 1944, which World War II in our universe was starting to wrap up around then. So we just have pre-World War II borders here from Germany. They still have this enclave. Poland looks the same. There was no annexation of the Sudetenland, so Czechoslovakia still exists. Mussolini is very likely still in power in Italy. I don't see why he, that would change. Benito took power in like the 1920s in this Italian nation, so he wouldn't be affected whether the no-no Germans rise up or not. Spain is drastically changed because now Francisco Franco does not lead the fascist Spanish to win the Civil War. What side is the fascist side, though? There's a way to know, but... And weirdly, in this universe, Turkey has been carved up. Maybe the Allies had nothing better to do, so France and Britain declared a war and carved up Turkey. Maybe not their original plan. Remember, their goal was to really carve up the Ottoman Empire, where Turkey wouldn't even exist as we know it. So they pretty much do that, I guess, because maybe they were just bored. They had nothing else to do. I mean, remember in 1939, the Allies really didn't want to fight a world war? But maybe by, like, 1942 or 43, they would have rebuilt and maybe they would want to fight something. The Soviet Union would just be chilling, more than likely. They'd probably want Poland, but I don't think they would do anything about it. So we can confirm that was the Weimar Federation. Oh, we still have monarchy in Yugoslavia. And there's currently a Mediterranean Cold War going on. So there's the Italian allies, obviously Italy and Albania. There's Hungary. The Italians are probably allied to Francisco Franco, which is East Spain. Then there's Greece, Yugoslavia, Portugal, and the Republican Spain, or maybe more of a communist Spain. I'm not sure. This looks like a lot of monarch nations, though. Oh, the red are British allies. So it's the Italians versus the British here. Then there's the third Europe, which is basically just the Soviet Union and possible members here. Centralia Railroad. This is a fascinating universe. I'd love to see someone, like, mod this into one of the games. Just because you can still feel like the continent might explode at some point, still leading to a World War II, just a drastically different World War II. This is a way better timeline for Mussolini than anything that could have happened in World War II, to be honest. I mean, it definitely wouldn't be laughed at, I feel, as much as he is normally. I wonder if World War II breaks out between the Soviets and somebody else. And we're not even talking about what Imperial Japan is doing. That's the more interesting thing. They're probably still invading China. What if Africa was divided between the other European nations? So that means not Portugal, not Belgium, not Germany, not France, and not the British. Which, you know what, seems pretty fair because a lot of those empires already had other colonies around the world. Like, if anything, did these empires really need more territory at the time? So in this world, we have Austrian Sahara. There's also Austria, Egypt over this way. I feel like it makes sense to give them North Africa since they're the closest in this universe to that territory. Note this is a pre-WW1 world that we're talking about here. I'm assuming this is Greece. They're getting a part of Libya, the Suez Canal, and Tunisia this way. I think they've gone back to calling themselves like the Hellenic Empire. Oh, the Greeks actually have just a bunch of small spots scattered throughout the continent, mostly in the north. Then there's Romanian Central Africa. Now, I think I know why this universe gave them this. They control the modern-day African nation of Chad, so that's fitting that they have the same flag and they control the same land. Oh no, do we want to know what the Romanians would be doing in the Congo? I mean, the Belgians were infamous for doing some horrific things to the people that lived here. A colorized image of a Congonese man being punished by Romanian authorities. And if you think that's bad, the Danish would probably punish these people by making them walk on Legos. Then there's the rivals to the Danes, the Swedish South Africa that's gone coast to coast, which, fun fact, the German Empire was really hoping to gain after World War One if they won that conflict. They wanted, like, a really giant middle Africa here. I mean, the Dutch in our timeline did make it to South Africa. This time, they just took it from the British. Zululand. Dang, even the Russians got stuff. Russian Mediterranean. Can you imagine these guys with a Slavic accent? Of course, Liberia still is left untouched because that's like a U.S. thing. And we got a big old Ethiopian empire. I like the nations that maintain their independence like Darfur, Sokoto, and Morocco. I guess Burundi as well. Wait, is Montenegro here somewhere? There's somewhere on this map. Mississippi jump scare. Oh my god! Finally, the Russians get their warm water seaport. Uh, of course, this whole universe was started by the 
Netherlands. Cool map, Le Schnitzel. How many world wars does it take to doom humanity? This is a World War III that apparently starts in 1962, basically because of the Cuban Missile Crisis. We do have active weapons of mass destruction. Right now, it's just nuclear. So apparently, humanity is not going to be ended by World War III, even though that's like the big theory. I feel like that's kind of reasonable. Like, don't get me wrong, millions and millions of casualties would occur. But would all of human civilization fall in World War III, especially World War III that takes place in 1963? I don't think so. Mankind must put an end to war, or war will put an end to mankind, says JFK. As a result of this conflict, the Soviets completely collapsed. But unfortunately, that means we need a World War IV. So NATO still exists, along with a much bigger NATO here in Europe. This is also 1969. Oh wait, France barely exists. Spain is gone. The red are all the nuclear areas. And if you remember, China did not take place in World War III, but now they're the main enemy in World War IV. Holy crap, those nuclear uh, annihilated places. That's insane. So here's the year. I think they just decided to nuke all communist nations into oblivion. Oh, Vietnam is still split up. We have India on our side, though. I mean, if the scenario is just trying to end all human beings, you kind of need to pull in India because there's a lot of human beings in India. Although China did good because of its nuclear program. They couldn't compete with America. How about a World War V? Because we need to continue. Again, the goal here is to destroy humans, all of them. So a civil war needs to take place basically inside of NATO or the former winning. I mean, this is not that crazy? Look at World War II. The US and the Soviets were on the same side and immediately it's like, should we go to war? So I feel like this is not crazy to see NATO versus like the Entente, I guess. Oh, WMDs use not only nuclear but also chemical. So for some reason the South has joined again and the Entente would be the French, part of the Balkans, Poland all working together. The Soviet state has completely collapsed. They still haven't recovered. Then we have another war with India and China because, I mean, there's a lot of people here. Jeez, that would be very interesting. All of the Korean Peninsula, Japan and India fighting China but they They've also been dealing with a lot of nuclear fallout still. Oh, we shouldn't forget Australia and New Zealand. I mean, that's going to be the hard thing. How do you end New Zealand? That's apparently the best place to exist in the world if you're just trying to survive a nuclear apocalypse. Also note that nothing in Africa has happened, although there has been nuclear drops here. Probably because of, I don't know. I don't see how they're going to end all of humanity by just a bunch of world wars. Eventually, the world wars won't even be world wars. They'll just be like three dudes fighting on a corner. Here we go. World War VI. Literally, all of Eurasia basically doesn't exist. All governments have collapsed collapsed here. They did need a war to like figure out Africa. The free nations of the Accord. Once again, North America is fighting um, independence movements. So they destroyed the South. Now it's like California, Nevada, Oregon, Washington teaming up with a Quebec, which is so weird. Also New England. So they've got to nuke each other there. Also, yes, yeah, South America is finally involved. This starts in 1985. This is a lot of description, but okay, yeah. I just don't think it's, is there going to be a World War 7? Why did I even doubt it? World War 7. Basically just the allies versus the reckoning powers. So some states have rebuilt at least they've rebuilt enough. This is 1984. This starts in 1998 and ends 12 years later. MLK Jr. says the ultimate weakness of violence is that it is descending spiral. Oh, the problem with this war is they're now using biological warfare. So it's just disease. This is a Plague Inc. game. Okay, I can, okay, you know what? Maybe I can see this particular world war ending all of humanity if it's like a really bad, you know, obviously biochemical that just gets out of control. All right, yeah, I guess I can see that. Holy crap, World War VIII starts in 2010, right after World War Seven ends. This ends in 2064, which is why the map is all messed up because I believe global warming has made a very big impact. We have the final WMD, which is weather manipulation. So not only are there diseases, man-made diseases that are destroying humans out there, but also, yeah, the ice caps. They've just completely melted everything. The Allies, the African Union, the People's Liberation Army, the Heartland. What a mess. Okay, I think I stand corrected. Maybe world wars like this can end literally every single human being. Oh my goodness, I get it. It doesn't need to keep going. I agree agree with you, please. This is until the last year of the century. I don't even know what this is. This Are these aliens? Maybe if aliens came down. Oh, these are like machines rising up. Okay, there's basically Terminators. All right. If there wasn't enough reason for me to believe that every human would die, now I'm on your side. I get it. Okay, I literally cannot keep doing this. I'm so done. 92, it's actually 2. Point, World War 9.2. That was an asteroid hitting Earth. World War 10, black holes resurfaced. And I think there's some outer being species here. Aqua team thrust force please make it stop please make it stop there's fighting happening in mars now also the moon's surface oh my god i don't want to do this anymore global water situation continues to deteriorate i believe you oh my goodness what are these weapons of that what is this kinetic impact They're th we're throwing asteroids at each other now also antimatter those are some crazy wmds i never even considered that i don't even know what to say i don't even know what to say what 
is this? I don't even really think these are human beings anymore. They're like, they've got to be mixed with like all the nuclear fallout radiation. Their DNA is just, it's got to be different. How? 15? Oh, okay, thank you. Holy shit. I did not expect this to keep going like that. We're just hurling meteors at Earth now. This looks like a game of world box. Life uh, finds a way, Jeff Goldblum. Turns out all those meteors rocked the Earth to its core and managed to bring back the uh, magnetic sphere. So I think there are still, there's still life. Maybe even humans somehow in this universe which is kind of funny. You can never stop the indomitable human spirit. Really well made. I'd love to see a continuation where humanity returns to the recovered Earth and they start another world war. Oh, please, no. I know not what weapons World War III will be fought, but World War IV will be fought with, ah, big scary lasers. They just got more and more cursed. I just love how I started this scenario off. Like, no, there's absolutely no way you can destroy every single human being. Then I was like, okay, yeah, you're definitely destroying every single human being. And then I went back and I'm like, well, maybe, maybe one or two dudes would survive. What a crazy roller coaster. Right. As always, big thanks to my patrons. Month two in Drew's basement. Drew's Argentinian grandpa. Douche I'm bag boys. I can't Cutter sleep. Pavel, Kansas Drew's was voice. mentioned. Amateur archaeology. A fat Norwalk. Carmel West. Inquisitor's King Bear Hayes. Carino's best girl. Migaloo the Nord, Goat. Tyrol. Tamron. The Mexican 760. Boy. If you like your name here, check that link to Patreon down below.